we got more documented people getting documented in the process, less DACA. You know, it, you know, we have been working as a community to get it right. We tell our people we got to get it right because this trauma got to stop. wanted to open up the conversation again and see some of the issues and, and projects or things that you all are dealing with within, you know, the Southwest Detroit context. Being a lifetime resident of uh, Detroit, um, my family got to Corktown in the 1890s. And growing up, everything from the Lodge Freeway to River Rouge, from Jefferson to Warren, was Southwest Detroit. Um, Corktown was still Corktown, but this is where our families, where our, all our families came from. This was an original immigrant neighborhood here in Corktown. Over the last seven years or so, the Hispanic community has completely disappeared from this area. We are probably the last residents left in Corktown of the Hispanic community. And the reason why we moved here was because this was neutral gang territory. Our grandparents lived here, so nobody really messed around here. This is, you know, it was kind of off <coughs> limits. And Southwest Detroit was an island that nobody gave to about. Not the city, the government, no development, nothing. Nobody came to Southwest Detroit. Southwest Detroit grew its own nonprofits, it grew its own business district, it grew everything out of necessity that nobody was coming in to save us. And now that we have built this beautiful community, we're being pushed out by development. This new Detroit isn't for everybody. Uh, we created this greatness and now other people are profiting from it. I also come from immigrant parents. My dad was Italian and my mother's Mexican and they came in the early 1900s landed in Southwest Detroit. And so I know Corktown very well because of my father's heritage. And I know Mexican town very well because of my mother's heritage. I was born in the 42 and seven area, lived there for 40 years. I just came off of Rosa Park and I, I, I didn't even know if I was turning right on, on Trumbull because of all that new development. And I'm, I'm here all the time. People don't wanna say it's gentrification. You know, but it is gentrification, and gentr and it's not about a, it's not about a cult it's about a culture, not a race, right now, because I have my my white allies, residents in in Corktown that are just as scared. You know, they're losing their piece of the pie too, and so now it's about the green. You know, it really is about classism versus racism. I mean, our neighborhoods are struggling. There's this thing going on that we need to develop Detroit and Detroiters have been developing all along. We've upped the game on what is community engagement. And we're going to other meetings, development meeting, you know, we go to a development meeting for something in Corktown and we're told we gotta get this done by such and such because that's this corporation's timeline. What on earth does that have to do with our timeline? The other concern that um, hasn't been addressed here is our, popula our Latino population that um, is undocumented and how many times that's a barrier for even citizens of the United States, their children that are born in this country, have difficulty with making those roots that you were talking about because they're not able to identify. They're, um, they're not able to root themselves and say, I belong here. Um, they're not, even they've came to the, the program, but at home they're living a different situation where at any time they're gonna be unrooted for, for where they're at, they're gonna be sent to their countries, or they're gonna have to stay with uncle or an aunt, and their family dynamics is gonna change. And unfortunately, you know, it holds the youth back, and that families have to struggle through this. We have moms coming to our facilities crying because they don't know how to help their youth. One of the hot button issues around that is should citizenship be included um, as a question on that uh, on the upcoming census uh, form and I just wanted to get some of the perspective from you all who are working you know directly in policy and in this uh, you know heavy immigrant community about about that in particular. I know we got to get counted you know I know the resources that are not coming to us per person in our city uh, to our communities because they're not counted. However, with this administration and this not knowing, 
If that box goes under, it would, it's going to be really hard. It's going to be really hard. I'm not saying I'm not going to, but it'll be really hard for me to um, promote to get counted if you have a chance of getting, if you are undocumented and you have a chance of getting deported. Undocumented families right now, because of this administration, are scared to even go to places that might be connected to government entities. Mm -hmm. I have witnessed par like families being destroyed, and I nobody will risk that. The, the president recently said that uh, he was going to move forward with executing mass um, arrests and, and, and deportations in, in immigrant communities, and I wonder, um, f at, like some of the kids that I coach, um, they, I'd, I'd hear them talking. These are eight, eight and ten year olds, you know, about about people getting arrested in, in Southwest and um, and and ICE, uh, y you know, um, break-ins and, and and things things like that. So I just wanted to get uh, some of that perspective directly from from you all that that live and and work here. When you have your parents go to the grocery store and you never come back, that's terrorism. They're terrorizing our community. They're locking our children in cages. They're putting our men in cages so small that they're standing on toilets for breathing room. And our community is suffering. These are real people. These are babies that are being given little metal blankets. They're not even, not even cots to sleep on. You know, when there was talk of ice raids on churches, people were going places and getting instructions as to how far they had to stand away to video, what they could do to form a human barricade, you know, how to, you know, getting trained from 60s activists, how to lock arms and lay down and go limp um, to block a doorway to a church. Um, and that, those plans exist in this community. Not everybody's undocumented either. Let's get it right. Mm -hmm. You know, I think there's a perception, and we need to sh shift that narrative. That we and we got we got kids going to Harvard and Stanford and, and Princeton. We got kids that are going, you know, graduating from high school. That we our graduation rate is up. Our college rate coming out is up. So watch out, because eventually our numbers dictate that the population is going to shift. You know, and and we we got to come together. This separation is, is uncalled for. There's, there's a linguistic thing that's going on here too. When we say undocumented, we need to talk about why people are undocumented. People don't just jump on a caravan to, on a whim. They're fleeing, okay? They're leaving corrupt governments. So we have people here who are undocumented for one piece of paper. They need their high school diploma. They need a birth certificate. They need, okay, and they got to go home, risk trying to get back here, and then now can't come back here um, to go pay some corrupt official in their home country $5,000 to get a birth certificate. That's, that's not exactly undocumented. That's, that's robbed of your identity and your, your ability to prove who you are and that you can be here. Southwest Detroit is a border town. The right to search and seizure through the entire state of Michigan is out the window. So ICE and Border Patrol and Customs and all these people run through our neighborhood. It's like shooting fish in a barrel. So they're running around here being able to do whatever they want to do harassing kids playing in the park because in the state of Michigan, the Constitution does not apply because we are 100 miles within the border. I think we've talked a lot about development, immigration, education, um, school absenteeism. All those issues, I think, have a lot to do with the types of environments people live in. And a lot of that has to do with all of the pollution and industry and toxins that are literally pumped into people's bodies and lungs on a daily basis. And I think it's important to recognize that all of that industry and all of that poisoning that's going on lasts for generations, lasts for decades. And you know, asthma is, is really linked to school absenteeism. And so if, if industries are 
are responsible for you know the asthma and the, and the upper respiratory issues that people are having no wonder we have children who aren't going to schools often because they're having breathing issues. What has happened in our community is, is really awareness and people not understanding that if we don't do something, you know, I'm, a, I'm like community benefits should be building us another clinic. We have CHAS clinic and it addresses our, uh, our low income population, but, but we need another clinic because we're getting ready to expand another bridge. You know, we got all these trucks coming over, we're gonna double that. Uh, and I don't. I feel like somehow that those conversations have been kind of shut down in a way where they were very. Uh, it seemed like Urban Research Center came out of University of Michigan. I worked for U of M. I for and and, uh, and did an asthma project. I personally have chronic asthma. I grew up in the 4217 area, and that's where my house was for 40 years. So we're doing. We're making our own agenda, and we're going to continue doing that because. Like I tell people, I've always been a risk taker and a rule breaker because the rules were never made for my people.